So I, that's a great speaker technique, right? Yeah. How about I spend the next hour giving you some of my best techniques that have grossed me over $2.5 billion. Yeah. Oh. So I do normally have a little bit clearer screen, but I think you guys can see it. They call me the queen of pitch. Now, oh, and you know what? So pitch is not something that you need to sell somebody on. How did you get here? Somebody pitched you, Raul pitched you, a friend pitched you. I just went to an event and they're like, Forbes, there's no pitching here. I'm like, excuse me? I wake up in the morning going, honey, would you rub my neck? If he says yes, I win, that's a pitch. <laughs> I wake up pitching. Did you take out the garbage truck? Thank you very much. Kids clean your room, those are all pitches. I'm gonna teach you that a pitch is not something you're gonna sell somebody on. It is a way of life. And it's only an effective way of life if you choose to get anything and everything that you want. Anybody here want stuff in life? Yes. Great, learn how to pitch. Now I'm not kidding, it's not a joke about what I have to offer here. So one of the things we're gonna talk about, and I, I hesitate to get off the stage, I love being in the crowd, but the lighting is just so damn good here. <laughs> so one of the things that I'm gonna to talk to you about, and I'm looking around the room, I see a lot of dreamers. There's enough of us here that I've met you guys before. Some of my students, yes? So raise your hand if you're one of my students. I love that Jacqueline is here. I know Diane is here. How do I, I have 28,000 students here, I know their names. Mm -hmm. I take what I do very seriously. I don't need to be here, guys. I've made a lot of money doing infomercials and movies and television. I love this part of my life mm -hmm. because, and you'll see a little bit later in the presentation that my daughter was the one who came to me and said, Mom, you made all your money, you did really well but you don't have a legacy unless you impact other people. Whoa. Mm. Yeah. By the way, that beautiful words of wisdom came from a 17 year old who was stuck in my house doing COVID with her twin brother, mm -hmm. who has created a company worth millions and is sitting right back there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My heart and my soul, I never really get to hang out with her at, at speaking because she, has a, you know, she runs a whole entire company out of Florida but she came here to help support you guys. Yeah. You should feel really special about that. Yeah. If you get a chance to meet her at lunch or later, as a 21-year-old self-made multimillionaire, wow. and she'll tell you how exactly how she did it, I question how many of you are continuing to play small. Because your mom told you something, or your teacher told you something, or your ex-boyfriend, husband, girlfriend, whatever, told you something, and you held on to that like it was a truth. And I'm gonna ask you in this next hour and a half to dispel those limiting beliefs. Anybody with me? And you should be. And if you didn't raise your hand, this girl with your hat, come on, Doreen girl. <laughs> I'm not kidding. We don't want to play small anymore. No. There's not enough time left on the planet, and people need us. Everyone in you in the room is a leader. And whether you truly embrace that or not, the lead, way to lead is to speak. Is to not just impact one-on-one -on -one in an office somewhere as a therapist, but to impact millions standing on a stage, virtually or in person. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And so this whole concept of playing big, even for me, has been a little challenging. So my name is Forbes, and I will tell you something very interesting about your name. When your name is Forbes Riley, people go like, oh, so your first name's Riley? No, no, my first name's Forbes. And then they would say, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> right. So my first name is Forbes, like the magazine, and if you don't know which magazine, I don't want to spend my time talking to you. <laughs> I don't know what smut you read, but if you're not reading that magazine that puts women billionaires on the cover, congratulations. And the last name is Riley. You know what Riley stands for? As in life of Riley simply means the good life. Right. What a great combination for money and the good life. How, hello. And then I get to embody that. You get to embody there's value to your name as well. When you put your hand out and say your name to somebody, please make it matter. You know what I hear a lot of? Hi, my name is Nice to meet you. <laughs> No money and nice to meet you, what's your name? <laughs> and some of you say it so fast that we don't really understand what that is. So one of the secrets to my success is verbal communication. Mm -hmm. To not waste the words or the time that you have in front of somebody else. And I'm gonna teach you that it's okay, you know I have a book in front of you. The formula that I've used to gross two and a half billion with an absolute B, billion dollars. Now I've done that through television, through anybody here watch QBC HSN? And most of you are old enough, sorry, to uh, enjoy infomercials. I'm talking to my 22 year olds like, an infomercial? Yeah, like a glorified sales video on a thing called a TV <laughs> with a clicker. And I tell them we used to have children so that they could run up and change the channel and then a clicker happened. <laughs> now, by the way, the jokes get no better. I love telling that joke, so I hope that you enjoy them. She's laughing, she can stay. I'm not sure about this table over here. <laughs> 
So mastering the art of the pitch. Now before I came along, nobody wanted, there's no art to pitch. There's some guy hawking stuff. Want to buy a ginster knife? It can cut through a can. Add a tomato. That is not what I'm talking about. Watching someone's eyes when you talk to them, it doesn't matter what you have to say. It matters that what you say affects them and what they have to hear. Our last speaker, as much as I loved her, one, she said several times, I think both of them did, you need this. Can you write this out? Open up your booklet. Mm -hmm. This is my biggest, and by the way, nothing wrong with that. That's what passion means. You need my vitamin. You need my course. You need, don't ever say that anymore. No one cares. No one, stop telling people what they need. Get them to want what you have. That is a successful pitch. You have a product or service, when you deliver it and somebody wants what you have, you will get a what? You'll get a yes. Now I do have to get off the stairs. Anyway, you can put those stairs at the front of the stage. Is that possible at all? I know that's kind of an annoying thing to do. But if I come down here, there's no light on my face. How about I make a prediction? What is your name, darling? Ani. Ani, would you like to see, right, I just wrote something down. Would you like to see something cool? Always. She said yes, how do I know yes? <laughs> no, that's, that's kind of a cool magic trick, right? What did I just do? Don't ask a question you don't know the answer to. So many of you do that. Well, so tell me about your life. No, I don't know, I don't know about your life. Do you, are you somebody who you know? Get a yes. I'm going to tell you, getting yeses will change your entire life. You can bring down the house lights. My goal here, and I guess I'm going to get my exercise from step class. <laughs> Ta-da! Is all about clarification and communication. When you do that, you get more confident. Anybody here get a little nervous when they start talking? Don't think they have the right words to say? I'm gonna show you that's the last thing you wanna be thinking about. Nobody cares about the words. They don't even remember what you said. People only remember how you made them feel. So if you are nervous fumbling for your words, what do you think comes across to them? You're just not confident. You lose. That's the crazy thing about this whole game. I'm gonna teach you guys to be much more verbally eloquent. What is pitch? There should be a little audio to that. John? My day is a pitch. Everything, my interaction with my children, that is a pitch. And it's, it's causing me to rethink and reprogram my thoughts, my words, my behavior. Everything is aligning and changing because of my new understanding of really what a pitch is. It's not just this one dimensional, it's a pitch to you know, sell your product or sell your coaching business. It is a new way of living. That's what I'm getting from this. I can have anything I freaking want, especially with my husband, because I am really learning how to pitch the hell out of him. <laughs> Thank you very much. That is seriously what I'm talking about. When you master this art, now you're like, well, wait a second, what am I pitching? Why would I pitching? Who here has a product? Raise your hand. A physical product, congratulations. Who here has got a service they sell? Oh, excellent, excellent. Oh, it's hard to sell a service. No, I'm gonna show you how to do that. Who here just has an idea they wanna get out to the world? Yes, so actually you should all raise your hand. You have a lot of ideas, and half of you are not getting them actionable because you don't know how to pitch. And then you come to me and go, I did, I, my pitch sucks. Guys, let's work on this. How many of you have ever gone to a movie and told somebody else about it and they went? Right? Did Paramount send you a check? <laughs> no, they didn't just do that because if you're an affiliate marketer, they would have. Or you went to a great restaurant. Hey, everybody, you should come to the eat. You pitched your friend a restaurant you don't even have a financial stake in. Yeah, that's right. You're a great pun. You don't have a financial stake. <laughs> but you pitched them. You enrolled them. I'm going to get you to understand if who here has kids. Ever get your kid to clean their room? Absolutely. Congratulations, you pitched. So don't tell me that when it comes to selling your business or service, I don't know how to pitch. Yes, you do. Anybody here get married or ask someone to marry them? Yes? yes. Well, if you, sell, if you pitch someone to marry and they say no, guess what? You didn't read the room right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. I have a personal problem. When I hear of a great product, a great person, a great service, and a bad pitch, and I get pitched every day. Because I've got two new TV series coming out, one called 60 Day Hustle, the other called Two Minute Drill, all about people pitching me. Most pitches, can I say this in program? Suck, they just freaking suck. <laughs>
Because people are like, nah, 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 nah. the statistic, that, I'm like, oh my God, I'm so freaking bored. Get to the point. What do you want me to do? Do you want me to invest money? Don't tell me about your product. Tell me how I'm going to get my money back. <laughs> That's what an investor wants. They don't really care what you're doing. It's a widget. I know, I have a lot of these kind of secrets. <laughs> By the way, that was the first man to ever put me up on a pedestal. That's my dad, her grandpa. Uh, <laughs> Funny thing about Barry, Barry Kaufman Forbes is he was a magician. He taught me at a very young early age how to do magic tricks. You know what that allowed me to do? Be a professional liar. <laughs> no, it's not a joke. Look, I'm doing something over here, but I'm really doing it over here. I'm cutting a girl in half. No, you're not, Dad, that's not real. That's one reason I'm better at this than most people. How many of you had a dad as a magician? Probably none of you. That man there, I love that. McKenna had a, a mom who's a magician, that's why she's very good on stage. I will tell you, I think every kid in school should learn how to do at least one magic trick. He didn't graduate college, but he built that printing press. He was a genius, he was an inventor, he was a dreamer, and he was slightly crazy. <laughs> and you know, I have to honor him and love him for that, but growing up with that was very different than most of you. He would create inventions that nobody wanted. Talk about the craziest thing in the world. That, my friends, is a half a garbage can, a lawnmower engine, lots of paper mache, and I had a Batmobile go-kart. <laughs> yes, I was the cool kid on, no, I was the idiot kid on the block. Like, oh my god, look at her school, whatever. Uh, you know, it's okay, don't feel bad for me. My wacky childhood, because write this one down, you are the sum of the obstacles you overcome. Literally take a moment and write that down so you can read it later. I went through some crazy obstacles, as I'm sure everyone in this room has, and yet you endured and you're here. And like Raul said earlier, we're gonna celebrate that. You just being physically here after seven years of a Lyme disease, congratulations, after surviving cancer, after surviving a narcissistic ex-husband, whatever the problem is, you're here. And so I dealt with my dad for a long time. You know, that is, what you were looking at there is Sure, I'm pointing. I'm magically pointing. <laughs> There's the wacky inventor. Let's go back to the future. And that, ladies and gentlemen, was my dad's garage. Oh. Oh. Right. I'm sitting in the garage one day. He turns to me and said, kiddo, how do I get my ideas out to the world? My dad, I have no idea. I'm eight. <laughs> well, let me tell you, most of my life, when he passed away, was spent because what happened when he passed away was that garage that was his Disneyland was my everything. Garbage collectors came, junk collectors came. People bought his tools and nobody gave a shit about his ideas. And I watched them go out the door and I was so freaking sad that I said, you know what, I'm gonna spend my life helping people like you who are inventors get your ideas out to the world. And for about 20 years I took inventors onto home shopping. I made millionaires out of people who would otherwise, like my dad, have a garage full of junk. I think it's a bit of a noble cause. I'm pretty proud of what I did. But now I look at you guys and I'm like, are you stuck where you are? I did my dad's mission, and I'm gonna to get to the end, of, at the end of this. My dad asked me to do something on his deathbed. <coughs> it's funny, I don't always get that emotional. But he looked at me because I was a little, I was a little different from other kids. And I'll share with you why. But I've always been a big dreamer. And uh, hmm, that's interesting. I just got very, very so I apologize. Right. I know, right? Uh, so my question to you is, I may have to come up the stage for a second. Can I get a sip of water? Ooh. And maybe because we are so intimate. Thank you. Now you know why you do it. Well, you definitely know my why. I got a little like kind of crazy. Oh wow. Huh. So the question here is who do you blame? Are you blaming your parents for doing your education? I may have to sit down like I really got a little yeah. Like a little flush, I'm not feeling incredibly well. Oh, it's kind of weird. <sighs> Who here blames COVID-19? Anybody? For you not your success? I tell you, in the middle of COVID, my daughter and I created a multi-million dollar company. Crazy how that happened. 
Some of you were selling toilet paper, others were buying it. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of you blame me. And I'm going to tell you something. Who here has made a million dollars in a day? Anybody? Oh, come on, we'll we money. have or we want? Have. Freaking have. <laughs> oh. I want to. Everybody I, wants to, but I, I have to. I have it in my mind. I have to bring it up. I have it in my mind. I have it in my future. I have it in my bank account. Uh, nice. I took a very silly little product that nobody wanted because I spent my life taking silly products that nobody wanted out to the world. And when it came to my fitness product, I took that little yo-yo thing, which I'll let you guys demonstrate later if you want, and nobody wanted it. I want you to see that number there. It says 55,344 sold in one day. Oh, hello. It rolled up to 64,000 in one 24-hour period, and I got a check for $1.2 million. I appreciate yours in your head. I appreciate that you want to do that. I did it. Wow. And I did it with a product that nobody wanted wow. and nobody understood. So if you've got something that's easy to understand, you're way ahead of me. Wow. But are you depositing that check in your bank account? Because I did. And I will tell you, it's a life-changing moment. Wow. It just reminded me that maybe what I'm up to in this world matters. I don't think you need to go through all the heartache that I did to get to that point. What I'd like to do is leapfrog you. Would that be okay? Yeah. What if I told you I could create video assets for you that would put you on the map and make you look like a rock star right now. Who wants that? Okay. That is what I'm up to. I own a television studio in Florida that I do that. I take you guys and I make you look like you're already there. And would you buy somebody who looks like they're already there versus somebody who wants to be there? Right, that is what I'm up to. We're gonna talk about that all throughout today, how you can do that. Because I'm gonna applaud the fact that you're just in this room. Being a speaker is not easy. Apparently, it's one of the top three things people fear most next to death. Yeah. You're either, I don't know, you're either in the box or eulogizing the person in the box. I'd rather be here. Going, I'm, I'm okay, I can speak. I'm on stage. <laughs> right? I don't know, that sounds like a much worse thing. But I'm going to tell you, within your speaking, the problem with most speakers is they go, blah, 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 they're talking. I'm going to teach you how to enroll, how to pitch. Now, the number one thing when you're pitching somebody, here's the first thing I want you want when you're pitching. I want you to like me. I want you to love me. Anybody here find you love me? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right, right, and I thank you, don't tell my husband. Yeah. Uh, I'm kind. I'm, well, but see, but that's the funny thing, is I'll tell you what, I just signed on to a, a thing, and the guy was like, there's no pitching! I'm like, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> I wake up pitching. <laughs> I pitch all the time. And, I, and, you, and I'm going to tell you, practice pitching. Practice getting the neck massage. Practice your kids taking, you know, cleaning up their room. Practice this, because when it comes to you and you want a product, I'm going to pitch you and you're going to go, thank you. That's what you want. You don't want to have somebody, and you've all done this. You all heard somebody who was in the network marketing industry. You really need this, no need juice. Oh my God, you want to make $10,000 a month? No, what are you doing? That's not a pitch, that's bullshit. That's somebody who was taught, but that's the problem with that industry. They're really not taught how to constructively pitch, how to enroll. Write these three words down. You want to excite somebody, you want to engage them, and you want to enroll them. And I'm going to give you permission to enroll them. Because what you're doing is what your life is committed to, right? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't that be interesting to somebody else? Stop being afraid of, oh, I don't like to sell. Well, then go home. <laughs> Literally go home. Because you shouldn't be talking to people if you don't have something interesting to talk about. How many of you spend time talking about the weather or the color of the paint? You, I don't care about any of that stuff. I want to know what business you're up to, what new book you've done, what movie you're creating. I want to know that because it's what you're committed to. And you do want to talk about it. You do want to pitch it. All right, so a crazy fun thing. I'm by nature an actress. That's all I really wanted to do. And maybe you want to turn the lights up just a little bit. Because I will stand here. As much as I like that, I think this is cooler. <laughs> I love acting. I got a new movie coming out, write this down, it's called Black Creek. Yes, when it comes out in April, I would love you guys, it's a martial arts western. Don't ask how I got involved. <laughs> and I play the bad girl. <laughs> Big surprise. Ooh, western. <laughs> well, it's, it's a western and it's an analogy for sex trafficking set in the 1890s. Oh, wow. I'm very proud, yes, and I'm the queen of the brothel, kind of like the Jeffrey Epstein girlfriend, and I'm not a good girl, and this is something that we all need to be very much aware of. And I think as an analogy, we might take a little more seriously. My very first pitch, though, literally, I walk into an audition. Pen is on a table. It's sell me this pen. Here's a problem. I don't come from any money. Anybody relate to that? 
when I'm supposed to sell something, I get really uncomfortable. I don't like to be sold. I don't have a whole lot of money to buy anything. So I looked at this pen. I looked at the camera right there, and I said, you know, funny thing about pens. I was 16 years old when I got to go to college. I was really young and skipped through high school. My mom used to write me longhand notes every day. I realized that a pen like this can reach out and touch somebody's heart. Pen drop. <laughs> Most of you would have pitched it going, well, it, it feels good in your hands. It's got a little clicker thing. It's not, you know, not like it. That's what everyone else did. Jake, a body by Jake, grabbed my face and said, you're going to make me a long one. <laughs> now, who here has an innate talent? Something that they know they were born with, some gift? You all do. If you haven't figured it out, Mr. Marshall, man, <laughs> you did. You were born with some talent. Mine was this ability to pitch. Jake discovered, I know this is crazy, but he created an entire network. Maybe turn the lights down for a second so you guys can hear this and maybe turn the sound up on this, Mr. John, if you could. This is a network television series on cable TV. Total fitness, total convenience, 24 hours a day. Now get ready for the latest in sports, fashion, and exercise gear on Fitness Plus. Hi, I'm Forbes Riley, and then we've got a great product for you. Take a look at this. Hi, I'm Forbes Riley, and that's by popular demand, the best way to develop rock-hard abdominals. Hi, I'm Forbes Riley, and welcome to Fitness Plus. Now, if you want to burn calories and tune your whole body, all in the comfort and privacy of your own home. So I'm feeling my thighs work. I love it. <laughs> the ads closing in the fly hole. Hi, I'm Forbes Riley, and welcome to Fitness Plus. Today, we're introducing you to the most diversified, balanced, and personally designed workout for the 90s. Hi, I'm Forbes Riley, and joining me to explain how you can have gorgeous more you 15, you can turn the lights up, 1,500 products in five years. You might want to watch that for the YouTube at the 9 of the Little Kid TV. I didn't care what the product was. Here was my job. There was no job description. There was no onboarding to this. It's like, Forbes, meet this inventor. She's got this, she's got this gold purse. Pitch it. Hey, everybody, I got a tape. Boom, and it would sell. Let me tell you, I did that 15. I didn't, not, didn't care what the product was. And somehow, as if by magic, I knew how to pitch it. Jake loved me. You know why? Because he freaking sold the network to Fox for $500 million. Hey, Jake, I love you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Forbes Riley, and welcome to Fitness Plus. Today, we're introducing you to the most diversified, balanced, and personally designed workout for the 90s. But I, even back then, though, there was this pitching thing. And then, luckily, infomercials came out at the exact same time. We kind of, they didn't really come out. I helped to formulate this going, there was this airtime on television, mostly over the middle of the night. Does anyone remember when it was like snow in the middle of the night? Yeah. It's like, you know, you can buy a half-hour commercial for like a thousand bucks. I'm like, bingo. All of a sudden, myself and Kevin Harrington and a couple of other people helped create the world of infomercials. The only issue was, and somebody said it here, is you said it, I was a girl. I will tell you, I took a lot of slings and arrows being a very cute girl. I was relegated to being the sidekick a lot, who supported the guy. Yeah. Don't kid yourself, I made a lot of money doing that. I learned a lot of lessons. And I also was kept from doing a lot of things because I was a girl. Mm -hmm. That does not happen in 2024. <laughs> very different. But growing up, anybody relate to that? Going, you know, there's a little thing here. My new battle is ageism. That's another, and that won't go away. Okay, I don't really care anymore. That man standing next to me was 88 years old. I stood next to Jack for eight years of his life. Who here bought a Jacqueline juicer because of me? Thank you very much, right? The whole entire industry happened. That commercial went for eight years in 80 countries. Newsflash, you know that particular pitch that you saw on TV? We grossed a billion dollars in eight years. I know what a good pitch is. <laughs> and then luckily, I'm still doing it because I get to teach you guys this and no one else is teaching this. No one's had this background. I have 197 <coughs> infomercials. I have three that are still running right now. Kind of crazy. A pitch to me is simply a well thought out, one sided, engaging conversation designed to get a yes. Yeah. I can have yeses. You get three yeses, you get a credit card. Did you know that? It's a fun game to play. So I said earlier, the three things that are important. Number one, some of you are not excited enough about what you do. You're kind of boring. <laughs> but you, you do. Hi, I've got this thing, and here's what I'm doing. And you know, you really like, I sort of like, that dog goes wah, 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 wah. That's what most pitches sound like. It loses steam, or it's not engaging, or not exciting. Ooh. I've been traveling a lot, I'm a little flush. 
So you're going to be exciting, engaging, and you're going to enroll people. You're going to get them to give you a yes, okay? So the truth is, if I asked you guys right now if you could do this, how many of you can? I can. You do? Okay. Absolutely. Here's the thing. Whether you believe that you can or you can't, you're right. Uh-huh. That is the funny thing about this. So the question is, are you ready? Yes. Ooh. I have to apologize, McKenna. I really don't feel well. Yeah, come on up here for a second. Hello, everybody. I mean, we're talking about pitching. Hello. We are. Yeah. Hi. Amazing. Oh, we're a paramedic. Yeah, it's kind of an interesting. I'm having definitely a, a moment here. Okay. I need to go. Give me, yeah. Give me a minute, baby. How interesting. I'm definitely broke out in a sweat. I apologize. Stop apologizing. No. Just saying thank you for your patience. Yeah. You have some cayenne pepper? I don't know. I don't quite know what's going on. We don't want you to take a minute. I don't want to take my jacket up, but I might take my shoes off. I might get very, very comfortable here. You can keep some cooking slides. We call that grounding. <laughs> wow. Is my heart rate racing? No. You don't want it to become a I did have a little bit of food. Normal something to eat? No, but I did break down a little bit of a thing, which is Thank you. I'm glad that you're yeah. here. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty warm. I got a paramedic. What do you have? Crackers. Kick the AC Maybe on. Maybe I'll take a little bite of the cracker. Yeah. I've got water. I don't know, you may have to go through slides and see what happens here. Why don't you click your slides and talk for a second? All right. Well, hi, everybody. I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring hi. You. My name is McKenna Riley. I am Cora hi. Riley's daughter. Woo! Yeah. Give her a little break, real quick. Yeah. Wow. No, I'm here, let's, yeah. let's turn off her mic real quick if yeah. we can. I'm, I'm, I'm going to sit down here. Let's have a conversation. Good. Can we click the slides? Thank you, thank you so much for that. And I love that you, by the way, did I make you care more about me? <laughs> Look at her you She got me. that third yes already. <laughs> well, the truth is I've been on tour for about six weeks. Living out of hotel rooms, you're my sixth week. A little challenging. No, no, I'm good, I'm good. I'm good. No, 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 relax, it's okay, I can't. I got sugar, oh wait. Trick or treat, all right. Yeah. So, here's what I want to talk about. Here's the point. Come out and see the video, it's okay. So many people. You know what? Here's the thing. I and I got all the first of all, I do feel like I'm like a great people. And I think that's what brings that Raul brings out in people. It's one reason I'm here to support him. And so many of you, turn that off, you and many of you will complain and say, you know what, Forbes, times are hard. It's 2024, it's another election, blah blah blah. You give me all this yeah, 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 yeah. Let me share something with you. Times have always been hard. Who here survived World War One, World War II, the Depression? Pick a time. I don't know. When and when was it good? It was good for like three years in the nineteen eighties, where there was no war. Besides from that, life has always been challenging. And I'll tell you what, human beings are very resilient. How you weather the storm defines who you are. You agree, McKenna? Yeah. yeah. So I don't want to hear about doom and gloom. I really don't. I want to hear about what you contribute to the world and who you are. That, that really is what matters to me. That you don't feel great and you still continue on. That is about perseverance and determination. Those are the people that I personally admire very much. You know, in 2022, right after COVID, so many people were complaining. McKenna, how much money did you make personally? And you should stand up for a second. You don't even need a microphone to say that. In 2022. In 2020, you mean 2020? You can start with 2020. I mean, here's the thing. COVID, come here for a second. Good for you. So COVID hits. I'm just going to share the story. We're going to do this tomorrow, but you're here, and I appreciate it. Turn your back, your microphone on. COVID hit. Times were really bad. What happened in our household? Well, for the... The first time in a year, oh sorry, first time in a month, my mother, who I've known for 20, for 17 years at the time, had never stopped working, didn't work the entire month of March, and was losing her mind. She was like, I have no idea what to do right now. I don't sit home. I, I don't know what to do. And I turned to her and I said, well, you're great at pitching. Let's start a business. You didn't listen to me when Bitcoin was $100. You didn't listen to me when coaching first started when I was 14 and said we should run a funnel. Might as well listen to me now. In a year, I'll make you a million dollars. A year when most people lost everything. I told, and we were in debt, we were going to lose everything because if we didn't work for another six months, what were we going to do? And I turned to her and said, in a year, I'll make you a million dollars. If you focus, you listen to everything I tell you what to do, I promise you by the end of this year, you'll make a million dollars. I cashed in on that promise nine months later. Huh. The power of pitching, teaching what you know. And so imagine 
if you could do that. And it's not, it's not so far-fetched because, guys, I was 17. I made a promise to myself when I was about 10 years old that by the time I turned 18, I would be a millionaire. I had no idea how I was going to do it, but I said by the time I turned 18, I was going to be a millionaire. Two months before I turned 18, I was like, woohoo! I did it! I did it. So the question is... Well, so this is interesting. Why are you even doing what you're doing? You know, one of the reasons that became very apparent to me when McKenna was in the house is that I need to show to her that I am everything that I said I am, and more, because I wanted to be the most amazing role model for her. But for some of you, I'm gonna ask you a question. Why are you doing, let's just get to the financial part of this. We started this company, and I'm looking at that picture on the far left when nobody was traveling, that's Costa Rica. And I said to myself, I've never been there, I really wanna to go to Costa Rica. Do you have a vacation place? Write this down, literally, write it down right now. Where do you wanna go? Where's your next vacation? Where's your next dream vacation that you need financing for? Most people are, I don't know why you want to be a millionaire. What do you want to do with it? Not just to put it in the bank. Retirement is nice. Let's get a visual. Because I'm going to tell you, less than two months after I started teaching this training, I was in that location. Nobody was traveling during COVID. I got an invite to a mastermind in Costa Rica. Like, did I just put that on my vision board? How is that possible? Just so you know, we call that Forbes again. <laughs> Forbes again means to manifest something when no one else thinks it's possible. I Forbes a daughter who is the best friend, best business person in the world. I'm not quite sure how, I don't care how I did, right? How did we all get here? She's a one million dollars, she just, she did. You manifest it, that's what this word means, to manifest something, so you see it in your mind, and then you make it happen. And sometimes you gotta get pissed off enough to go, I'm tired of settling for less. Write this one down, you get what you tolerate. Oh, right, how many people did that just resonate with? Oh, yes, raise your freaking hand if you get what you tolerate. You change your toleration, everything exponentially changes. I set boundaries, I don't let people do that, I don't want this anymore. I grew up with a massive set of limiting beliefs because of my parents, and I've decided as an adult, thanks to her wisdom, I'm not doing that anymore. Because it was insane, some of the things I settled for. Who wants a book? Anybody want a book? Well, well, bullshit. I don't want a book. I want to be a New York Times bestseller. That's my vision. The book has to happen because of that. When you set your sights to what? To the stars? Hitting a little bit lower, you still come out you know, higher than most people. Don't forget to have a wonderful family. Love somebody. Because I'm going to tell you at the end of this, I don't care how much money you have. My dad said he didn't even know what he was saying back then. No one ever wished they had another day in the office. But they do wish they didn't miss their kids' play or graduation, or one more dinner just hanging out with her. That really is the move. I know, right? I'm an emotional mess right now. <laughs> well, because there's a beautiful intimate, it's a beautiful intimate setting and I appreciate it. By the way, where do you live and what do you drive? Is it okay? I don't want a red convertible. If somebody does, they have it, right? Are you living the life that you want or you just continuing to settle? So I'm gonna play a little game with you. I'm not gonna look. Write down the number you, you paid on your taxes last year. How much money did you make? Write it down. What a joke. What a joke? Where's that microphone? What the heck is that about? We're, we're now going to get dirty. I'm going to get audience here. What's your name? Nancy DeParga. Hi, Nancy. There's no microphone, so talk loud. Nancy DeParga. Now, when I said that, you giggled. What's the problem? Because I just don't think it was enough. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. I know it's not enough. Uh, yeah. Write the number down. I'm not, no, literally, write the number down. It's, I'm not asking you your weight. Write it down. And I want you to look at the number. This is an exercise. And I want you then to say to me, what, what emotion, when you look at that number, do you feel? What emotion? Disappointment. Disappointment, that's good. When you look at your number, which I'm not looking at, how do you feel? I feel like crying. I feel <laughs> like crying. Okay, when you look at your number, how does it make you feel? Undervalued. Undervalued, feel like crying, disappointed. Oh my God, do you guys know? You knew your number all along. You're walking around with that simmering underneath your soul. And you want to know why you're not confident? Because when you look at the number you made last year, what's the number, what's the emotion? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so when she walks into a room, she'll have the oh yeah, and you've got, mm, I'm going to suck. That's not good enough. But we all have to start somewhere, okay? So what if we make that ground zero, look at your number, who all did the exercise, add a zero to it. 
at a zero to it. I talk about manifesting. That's the number you're going to pay your taxes on. Now when you look at that number, how does it make you feel? Yay. Yay. She already had the yay. When you look at that number, how does that make you feel? Look at it seriously. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. The awesome thing you figure out you're paying taxes on that. <laughs> Excited. So I, all I did was add a zero to your income and you went from, oh my god, life sucks, to I'm excited. <laughs> Why aren't you doing that? Why are you focused on what does it take to make that zero happen? <laughs> does it take starting a coaching company, selling your product, learning how to pitch? Yes, it does. Learning how to get your message out there. Also looking at how other people have done it and modeling what they do. Really easy thing too. If you make twenty four thousand last year, not a very good number, right? But your, by the way, your grandmother told you to get a job like your cousin who made about that kind of money, right? Yes. Yeah. My, I told my, I've been in business since I was twelve. I told my my dear grandma. She goes, what, what are you, what are you doing on your little computer thing? You should get a job like your your cousin. She works at the the, the boutique down the street. She makes I think like thirty thousand a year. And I was like. Oh, that's fun. I did that this weekend. <laughs> that's, that's a crazy phenomenon. I, I, especially the moment that in my, my school teaching, you know, you do those school conferences when you're in middle school. And I'm not going to tell that. I'm going to tell you. My mom goes, come here. How, how much money did you make this year? To the school counselor. To the school counselor. So like, I don't need you to tell me where my daughter needs to go to school and do this stuff and all that stuff. When this girl walks in with confidence and believes in who she is and where she wants to go and what she has, she'll get anything she wants, any education she wants, she'll figure it out. But don't try to beat that out of her. And they weren't, well, literally, they were, they, I got a call when your daughter's being disruptive. Like, what's the problem? We're making resumes and she's saying she's never going to need one. <laughs> And I'm like, how much do you make a year? Like, I make like 50, whatever it was. I'm like, my daughter made that last month at home on her computer. And she, the woman had no idea what I was talking about. But I'm like, she's never going to work for anyone. So, well, she needs to get a job. I'm like, no, no she doesn't. <laughs> Where did that come from? How did you know that at such a young age? Well, have you guys seen the last, what, 30 minutes of this brilliant woman? I had the privilege of working with you my entire life, watching you my entire life, and I could not be more thankful because there's not many people, I think, that can run up from backstage and go, oh my God, let me just take over your speech right now that I have no idea what we're talking about, no idea what the presentation's about, but I have the confidence and where about know how to communicate. And if you know how to communicate, it doesn't matter what's going on, where you're doing, what business you're in. If you can effectively tell someone what you're doing, you can come up here and be confident in what you have to share, that will get you farther than anything else will learn of any marketing technique or running this ad or this funnel. If you can't speak and communicate what you have to share, you're, there's, it does, nothing else matters. You need to focus on that. That is the core of everything when it comes to business. You know, it's called the mother daughter tag team. Come on, Raul, you gotta love that, right? It's the tag team. So if I took the 24000 like her cousin was making and added the zero, that was McKenna's bank statement six months into her first business. 241000 How many of you made that last year? One, two, three. I love that. Yeah, Four. I want you guys to all do that. It's not that hard. But some of you don't realize the technique to do it. Let's just change that, shall we? Yes. What if it was just a technique to found financial freedom? All right? So the truth is I am here to help. I do have a lot of secrets and techniques. And there's nothing better for me right now than McKenna literally running up, having no idea what she's saying, and blowing you guys away. <laughs> That's what I teach. That's what I talk about. And guys, I have a big free gift for you, by the way. I don't know if you know this. Really quick, who's Forbes Riley? You. Thank you. <laughs> I love that. She learned. She listened. All right, so we all recognize that first picture. Forbes, why do you do what you're doing? I'm going to tell you that you all do what you're doing because of something that happened to you. So for me, I was in kindergarten, and we noticed that I had a very strange thing going on with my mouth. And my mother, the hoarder, I love her for that, but she kept this from 1968. It's the impression of my mouth. You notice all the teeth going in different directions. 
I've taken that out every year at Halloween to scare small children. <laughs> but that was the mouth of an eight-year-old girl who just wanted to be pretty. And when I smiled and everything went in wonky directions, that wasn't the case. So the orthodontist from hell decided, let's put that little girl in braces at eight years old. And for eight years of my life, whenever I smiled, I had to steal. Not only to make me not pretty, but so freaking self-conscious. Oh, but it wasn't, it didn't stop there. He decided to put a tongue thruster in my mouth. I heard for two years of my life, I talked like this. I'm a real girl in first grade, and nobody can understand a word that I'm saying. For two years, y'all take communication for granted. I'm going to tell you, the gentleman back there, I'm going to take a look at him. I just saw him when he rolled in. How many of you took for granted that you walked here? I'm going to tell you, you don't realize the gifts and all that you have right now until any one of them are taken away. Your sight, your hearing, it doesn't matter. I couldn't talk. And it didn't dawn on me, you know, many years later, why I'm so passionate about communication. I was also overweight. My mother was 260 pounds my whole life. I had frizzy, big black hair. Unlike Marsha Brady, who was cute, I wasn't. And then I ran into a baseball bat, a little hard to see, but I broke my nose. And so now I'm just awkward looking. And rather than deal with all the kids bullying me and making fun of me, I said, you know what, I don't need you. I'm going to sit at home, do my homework, play with my dad, magic tricks, and just do my own thing. I grew up watching a lot of TV and movies. Funny thing about that, I wanted to be James Bond. <laughs> I want to be a Bond girl. I'm like watching those movies going, I want to live that life. Somebody out there is living that life. Somebody's living in great mansions like Dallas and Dynasty. We had a tiny little house, but I could dream. And I think my greatest gift is I can outdream most of you. Do you dream of having beautiful boy girl twins who are wildly successful? Do you dream of having a husband that is absolutely spectacularly beautiful and loves you? Those are dreams that I had. And then I forbes it. <laughs> I manifested it. Because for a period of my life, all I had was my dreams. I think about Nelson Mandela for 27 years in a prison. All he had was his dream of who he could be out to the world. But that's enough sometimes to keep you going when times are really tough. When you give up on your dreams, for whatever reason, you stop. What's your name? Hi, I'm Andrea. Hey, G. Andrea, what are you feeling right now? Uh, I'm not sure. Let's pretend you are. Well, I'm very touched by your presence. Thank you very much. And. Um, I can totally relate about the phrases and all that thing when I was a child. What do you do? I'm an author, I'm a coach, and I help other people to self publish their books. Where do you come from? Uh, originally, I come from Romania. So oh. that's a, that's a, that was a big dream for me as I was growing up to live here in this country. And so here What's I am. What's keeping you from your greatness? Uh, probably self doubt. Why? Because growing up, uh, it felt like I wasn't. Are you growing up good now? enough? Um, yeah, I mean, I look like a grown up. <laughs> 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 but when you grew up, do you think that you were not? No, I, my father was very loving, but he was also very demanding. So he pushed me to do better and better and better. And all the time, I felt like I was kind of failing. So. So you are now, and I want all of you to relate to this, you are writing your future from your past. How's that working out for you? No, not good. <laughs> not good? No. Okay, let me from Have a seat right now, and I'm gonna get to that in a minute. How many of you are writing your future from your past? All right, so I'm telling you some of my past stories, but I've also done a thing called breakthrough, and this no longer really affects me. I can tell you the story because I know it moves you, but I'm gonna tell you today, this present, moving forward, I don't know the story because I'm no longer tethered to that. What if I told you I have a technique to break that? Anybody want to do a breakthrough? Watch this. All right, let me get, so my dad, beautiful, amazing dad, slips at one point, tears off the whole front of his hand. I'm 15 years old, my dad's gonna spend the next three years in a hospital. Every night of my high school, didn't go to baseball, football games, didn't even know we had them, I go to my dad to be there for him, bringing him a great milkshake from McDonald's back then. <laughs> because that's where he was in the hospital for three years. But a funny thing happens. Write this down for me. This is my motto, this is what I live by. The word dream it, that's what we're doing right now. We're thinking about these things. Dream it, 
Believe it is the art of talking it out loud, telling people what you want, and then achieving it. That middle part is what we're going to coach on. How to articulate what you want to other people is the believing it part, okay? So get this, I'm in the hospital room, my mom says to me, kiddo, we've got no money for college. That was the only dream that I had. So I at least go to school, right? So, I'm gonna sit down for a second. So she says, there's this beauty pageant that's happening, Miss Teenage America pageant. It's got a full scholarship to college. She looks at my face and is like, but that's not gonna work. <laughs> 40 years later, I'm still thinking about my mom once in a while going, you're just not pretty. Not a good thing, I gotta tell you. My dad's doctor overhears this belief, right? And he turns to me and he says, you know what? We're going to fix her nose. That's the craziest thing in the world, 1975. He goes, he fixes my nose. I go from ugly girl to really pretty girl oh. overnight. Kind of crazy how that happened. And I will tell you what, I had enough self-confidence to say I'm going to, ooh, I, I'm sorry, I don't feel good. <coughs> Guess who won Miss Teenage America? I'm sorry, I'm in. I'm not quite sure. Take the mic. Excuse me. Okay. So, she won Miss Teenage. Oh, let me grab a mic. Okay. Come up here and help me? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> awesome. We know what happened, right? She's a winner. Everything that you just heard right now is about one thing. You. Your dream right now. As I sat back there, I had to hold the tears back. I see the room right now, and I know you're feeling it. We were so beautiful when we were young. We dreamt on a daily basis. Yeah. Every day was a dream. I'm going to be a firefighter. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be a superhero. <laughs> I dressed up. You want to know the craziest one? I wish I had the slide for you right now. For Halloween that one day, I got a briefcase and a suit, my little church suit, the one that I barely fit in, and I dressed up as an entrepreneur, and I went out because I had a dream. What just happened in this room? Her emotions got her because of what's happening in this room. When you wrote that number down, the dream actually started to ignite right then and there. It's real for you from this moment on. Everything from this moment right now is going to change your life. This tear that's sitting right here, and I know it's gonna come out, and I know it's gonna just burst. You know, I'm gonna be sitting here in front of you going, shit, I'm crying on stage. <laughs> you, honey, you brought the dream alive today. Yeah. You know, I'm always gonna do a presentation barefoot with no shirt on. <laughs> I love your authenticity. That's Thank how I, you, right? I saw you in my dream. Who else <laughs> that shoe? I'm gonna tell you, you want people to help you? Be sick. I might have to do this more often. It's a real thing. I have to keep the jacket for the moment. Oh, look at these cute shoes. Check this out. And they, these are like adorable. All right. I have no idea what's going on. All I know is you get to a certain age. I'm turning 64 in two months, and things just don't work the way they used to. Woo! <laughs> and I don't care. I'm completely crazy on stuff. Wow. All right, and now I'm three pounds lighter. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, if my mom and dad are watching. I hope they're getting a kick out of this. Yeah, they are. And it's a testament to who I am and how I show up in the world. I'm going to say to you that you witnessing this is the lesson for today. Does that make sense? The presentation is relevant. It really is. It comes down to what's keeping you from your greatness. What's keeping you from being out to the world? Some belief a long time ago, I'm gonna break through all of that. The point is I ended up winning the contest. Uh, there's my mom who was 260 pounds my whole life, who never got the message of what working out could do for you. She is, I'm probably 20 years older than her in that picture right now, and I wear the same size I did in high school. 
I'm committed to doing that. I made decisions in my life about what I would no longer tolerate. I didn't want to tolerate wearing a size 18. I saw how sad it made her and diabetes. And so I eat a certain way, I work out a certain way, I think a certain way, because I'm not interested in being average. Does that make sense to all of you? I think you're in this room because you don't want to be average. People who get to stand on that stage are not average. They have a desire to share, motivate, and move other people. And I'm gonna, that's what I aspire to. And so I created this whole concept of Forbes Riley. 1.8 million followers on one of my social media accounts. You can make the impact. My parents had no idea, Dad, my dad said, how do you get your inventions out to the world? You brand yourself, you decide who you are in this world. And I'm gonna tell you something else that's crazy. There is a formula to success. Let me say that again. There is a formula to success. And the ones that you see who have done it, follow the freaking formula. Get your videos in shape. Get your skills to speak on stage in shape. Get your back end, get your funnels. That's the formula, it's not secret. I had an 18 year old who figured it out and made a mil several million dollars. And you're sitting here going, I don't know how to do this. My dad in Romania, really? Stop, stop, stop. All that noise in the background. I know, right, the queen of pitch? <laughs> Let me share something with you. That particular photo, it was in the middle of, you see you all look at this stuff and you think it's for someone else. Does anyone relate that? Like, I remember looking at the movie stars, going, it must be for someone else, or they're rich, or they're lucky. So that is a spectacular photo, right? I know it is. I'm gonna give you the background of that photo. My kids are really sick in San Diego. They both went out there, they got COVID, they're in separate hotel rooms. I'm wondering, they won't even let me come and see them. My girlfriend who's a photographer right in the San Diego area said, come, come hang out with me for the afternoon. I walk into her studio, she says, let's take some photos. I'm like, oh. And then she showed me this outfit that was hanging in her closet, it was her boudoir outfit. I'm like, I put that on and all of a sudden I was like, oh. And then there was a crown on her desk. I took the, you know this is the cover of my latest book. It's an outfit that I picked out of her wardrobe and a crown from her desk. And it looks like we spent thousands of dollars on a stylist. No, I just had my stuff together. I knew my brand internally. I'm gonna challenge you that some of you don't know your brand. I know, right. You don't know your personal brand. Why do you think George Clooney can go off and sell a billion dollars worth of alcohol? Because he's got a brand. How many of you are branded? If I look at you, that you know what you're known as, who you are and what you do in this world, I'm gonna say not many of you. It's kind of crazy. Now, I never wanted to teach all of this. Because some of you are like, well, Forbes, I like you and all, but how come I didn't know you before? Well, I'll tell you why. I'm in Hollywood, it's a crazy, stupid town. And I'm the queen of infomercials. I'm making money hand over fist. I go to my agent, I hand him a contract for $100,000 to host a show. If you want to sit on the couch with me, at that point in life, I was charging 100 grand for the day. Cool, right? He calls me two days later, he says, Forbes, I got some interesting news for you, good and bad. I'm like, okay, give me the good news. The good news is the client loves you. I'm like, yeah, they're my client. If the bad news is, now get this, I'm 40. They want somebody younger and less expensive. And I found her for them. Oh. <laughs> Oh no, but the good news is I want you to teach her how to pitch. I said, wait, let me check and see if hell's frozen over. Nope, I'm good. I'm, and I said to the universe, I'm never teaching anybody this. I freaking print money. I had money, I mean, it was insane at that point in my life. I said, I'm never teaching this. And it was still that amazing young girl back there I said, mom, what are you doing? It was March, 2020. And I'm not doing anything. She said, really, why don't you teach a pitch? I'm like, no, 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 I made a deal, I'm never teaching pitch. <laughs> She said, you learned how to make money, but if you want legacy, you're gonna teach them how to do it. And so for the last four years of my life, even if I'm sick, even if, it doesn't matter, I'm traveling all around the world to teach you the skill that I know, who wants to really learn it. I will tell you, you guys are the beneficiary of this. Small, large audiences, it doesn't matter to me. If I can teach one person to pitch, so that you say, you know what, I no longer think about my dad in Romania, I have a mission to help other people, that means my life matters. Do we get that? That's why I'm doing this, and I'm insanely committed to it. I probably could have just walked off and sat, so I don't mind doing that. This is why I'm here. There is a formula to this, and I'm gonna teach it to you, I'm gonna show you something crazy. It starts out with the whole, what do you do? When someone asks you, what do you do? You should all be asking each other, well, so what do you do? We don't care what you do. We care what you can do for us. Oh, right, hello, I'm gonna bring the obvious to light. I created a training called One Minutes and Millions. Now, I'm gonna stand here and I'm gonna pitch it to you, okay? 
I charge $5,000 for this training. Just keep that in mind as you're listening to this. It's got an online series of videos, $5,000, okay? That's what I charge when I get paid for it all the time. Now, you get lifetime access to the training course. I hope you guys are drooling, right? <laughs> Can't wait to take your credit card out. We're here, $5,000. Can't wait to take my credit card out, Forbes. I want to learn. I want the workbook. I want the template. I want everything that you have to offer. Wait, look how amazing this training is. This course, I put all of mine in a book, and it is fantastic. I would not have gotten to this pitch if I had not listened to every video, and I kept rewriting and rewriting as it has you to do. As a writer, I know that uh, doing that over and over, um, it just, you know, it, it sets it in your brain uh, to the extent where it doesn't sound rehearsed and I can't say enough. This was one of your better ones that I've taken. I've, I've done a lot of your stuff. This one is good. This one. There you go. And there's a template to it. There is a formula to this, okay? $5,000. It's access to the online course. It's the book. It's the template. It's all of that. It's, right? The value is way higher than $5,000. Plus, there's also a bonus. I'm going to do a five day boot camp. Anyone want to come to a five day boot camp? Okay. Just no, seriously, forget money's no object. Money is no, I want you to imagine this because I'm going to blow your minds. Money's no object, right? If money were no object, you're like, you're in. Am I correct? Yes. You're in and you would show up for five days, yes? yes. That's kind of cool. I love that. So it is a boot camp for five days. Wow, the value is at 15000 I'm only charging 5000 okay? You don't care about the money because that's where you are in life. Going, oh, of course, I want to pay it. I just want to be there. What if I told you it was completely for free for you? Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Woo. Yeah. Yeah. What did you do? You pitched me and now it, So apparently, it's not that you don't want it in life, you just have a price tag and a value for certain things that you're willing to pay. I'm going to give it to you for freaking free and I'm going to see how many of you show up for five days. I'm going to tell you there's a percentage that won't show up yeah. because you're not paying the 5000 yeah. But yeah. I promise Raul back there, I'm going to look at that man and go, you promise to give it for free. Okay? Yeah. Get out your notebook so you can figure out the dates of this. It starts on Monday. You get an invitation to come for free. I hope you guys are going, damn. This Monday? Yeah, this coming Monday. Where are online? It is online, you do it all virtual. You don't have to come. You can sit in your bathtub if you want. <laughs> it is going to be, because we're East Coast here, I think it's from 7 to 8 in the morning, West Coast, and where I am, it's 10 to 11. We are West Coast. I know you're West Coast. Yeah, so it's like 7 to 8 in the morning. You're probably not doing anything else. Yeah. F R E E, you're coming. Yes. And you go, yes, Forbes, I'm there. Every single day. So it's Monday morning, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday. Now I'm going to blow your minds more. Okay, would that be fair? Yes. Freaking yeah. blow your minds. Oh, yeah. Now, just so you know, there is the regular attendees, and this is where you guys get to decide who you are. And then there's a little bit of VIP for an hour after that, and my beautiful Jacqueline knows over there. I will spend, if you come for free, that's the average regular person. If you say, you know, Forbes, I would like to invest a tiny bit and be a VIP, that's an extra hour every day, that's okay, but it's for five days. Now here's the funny thing about this. You guys have all practiced speaking, right? Y'all yeah. have something to sell. Okay. There's a pitch at the end of this on that Friday where if it's a VIP, you're guaranteed to pitch. The rest of you, we're gonna do a lottery and you may pitch mm -hmm. in front of probably 200 people that are potential customers. What's the value if I said to you, 200 people in a virtual room? <coughs> Could you make your money back right now? Yes, it's free. <laughs> okay, I just want you guys to go, wait a second. Now, I also want you to understand for a second how, when I said it was $5,000, you had a reaction, didn't you? Do you know how often you let money keep you from your greatness? By the way, it's completely tax deductible at $5,000. So when you make that 10x your money, you could have deducted it, but it's free right now. So I'm going to tell you, if you're VIP, your spot is guaranteed to pitch on Friday. I'm going to give you the code in a second that you're going to get to come. You can come for free. You can be the VIP. Makes no difference to me. But it starts on Monday. Who's going to join me? Yay! Hey, yes. Sorry, I didn't, everybody's here. <laughs> are you working? Come on, what are you doing at 7 o'clock in the morning? It doesn't matter. It's my gift to you, and I will ask if I would do something insane. For you guys to understand, number one, money is keeping you from your greatness. Yeah. Whether real or imagined. It kept me from mine, which is why I just did that offer. I wanted to see your reactions when I said 5,000. And some of you are like, oh. And then we're like, and it's free? Wait a second, okay, I'm in. And then like I said, a percentage of you won't show up because it's free. I've got your names. I know who doesn't show up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be happy with you. 
Okay, come on. Well, no, but it's a funny phenomenon about life. Yeah. You got two watches. One's fourteen dollars. One's fourteen thousand. The Swatch and the Rolex. Which one do you put in the in the vault? Which one do you put in the hotel safe? But they both only tell time. It's not even like an Apple Watch. <laughs> but you value the one that you invested in. It is true. So I want you to understand that the more that you invest in yourself, the more that you show up. I have a gym membership. I pay $9 a month. I don't always go. The one from $150 a month, I'm there every day. <laughs> Why did you do that? Yeah. I want you to start to understand your own psychology. And I want you to understand what's keeping you from your greatness and your success. And sometimes it's crazy. That's a very dangerous word. Please do not give your stuff for free. Raul, next time I'm not doing that. But right now I am. Well, because even if I asked you to pay $19, you'd show up. It's kind of a funny phenomenon. So, that is your ticket to the showcase, which happens on that Friday. Now I'm gonna challenge you guys, if you want to participate and be guaranteed, you'll make a little bit more of an investment and go to VIP. It's a small upgrade, there's the link. Now let's hope you guys can, do you all wanna grab that link or do you wanna come for free? So, if you wanna turn the lights down a little bit so we can see that. That is your free pass to that. Now I have a benefit for somebody who shows me that they've signed up. Oh, look at that. Oh, I love that. It's working. It is working, good. I have a crazy thing about speed to market. So I'm curious, the first four people who can show me that they're in, on their little screen, I'm gonna do something crazy for you. I got one right here. I knew you would be that. I can tell by the way you already, right? Men. I've got two. I've got two men. That's interesting in a room full of mostly women. I'm still scrolling. Okay. Make sure you put your name in whatever it is that you need to do there. I've got three. I've got a woman over here. Who's my fourth? No. The link is not working. What does that mean? So how do they. McKenna? Can you? Well, yes, I want to join. Hang on. This is an interesting thing. Well, guys, when you go to speak, remember I told you technology will screw up. Absolutely. It's guaranteed to screw up. I don't know why that is. That's interesting. It's Russell Brunson's fault. Uh, well, that's an interesting phenomenon. And of course, internet. Oh, I don't know. McKenna, are you having that issue with your phone? Is there a Wi Fi here? There is a Wi Fi. Password is tag 24. Okay. And by the way, I've got about 26 minutes to finish my entire presentation. So, McKenna, is there a URL that people can write down? Um, and you can put it on that board over there. Wi-Fi Studio something? If you make a landscape, then it'll, the, the often form will pop up. Well, you that's turn, interesting. Turn, 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 turn it from eyesight. All right, so here's one of the things that we're learning through technology, and I'm sure that Raul and we all would love to teach you that when you start to have your own funnels, how do you get people to take action? What do you need to tell them? Well, it's interesting, right? Yeah, absolutely. It is definitely Russell versus Go. <laughs> All right, well, while you guys are doing that, I'm also gonna share with you that also what you're gonna get is you're gonna get lifetime access to everything that we're doing. And if you wanna be in the showcase, you get to upgrade. But right now, I'm gonna go past that, so. I will throw in. Yeah. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to change the rest of the presentation. One powerful, positive relationship can make a difference in your life. That's what Forbes Riley has done for me, for my business, for me personally. And I encourage you, if you look at your goals and dreams, make sure you align yourself with people that will challenge you, that will hold you accountable, and that will bring the best out of you. Forbes Riley is one of those kind of people. And when you're looking for a speaker that can transform your audience and create value so that they leave your presence feeling better about themselves, but talking about you because of the impact that she brought. Forbes Riley, that's the one. I believe in her, and I can tell you, she will deliver for you. You have something special, you have greatness in you. Call for us rather because she will bring that greatness out. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. No, just, well, I'll get, guys, if you have, a, if you have trouble getting the link, I will get you the link. I'm going to be here all day tomorrow as well. I promise you I'll get in for free. Don't stress right now. That was Les Brown. I believe that Raul has an offer at some point about being in a book with the very legendary Les Brown. And I'm also going to say how amazing it is to have an endorsement by him. 
I'm going to tell you life changing. Hi, everybody. I'm Forbes oh, Riley. Welcome for to Forbes Living, where we make the world your stage. Can you imagine being in my studio and doing that with me? Anybody want to do that? You know, from being in movies and commercials to hosting television shows, my career, well, it's allowed me to see the world and to talk to real people about their hopes, their dreams, and what I wanted to do here was to create a show that allowed me to give them an opportunity to change their lives. And that's what this is all about. I graduated from Duke with, I got a degree in physics, um, but I just love making music. So I moved out to San Francisco, started a record label, Blue House Records. See, the thing about me, is that I've always looked out for the little guy or the working mom. But you need to start out in the cookware business. What do you do before this? I was a roofing contractor. Okay, how does that become cookware? I often say that you are the sum of the obstacles you overcome. About 12 years ago, we had no money for college. I mean, zero. I was 210 pounds about six months ago. I started using my 185 pound plate, and I'm 185 pounds. Uh, I had a brain aneurysm, birthed my twins, and I just uh, was, I was so sick, so run down, taking these essential oils and using them every day in the hospital was the only thing that really, really got me through. So what we've got here is a new kind of talk show. It's entertaining, it's educational, but truly at the core, it's about making people's dreams come true. You know, my goal with the show is to give people a platform where they can tell their story, share their idea with the world, and we created Forbes Living. Kevin Harrington here, an original shark from Shark Tank. I think one of the biggest things I learned from being on Shark Tank is that there's an incredible amount of innovative ideas out there, but very few places to really showcase them. We would get over 50,000 submissions, but only 200 of them would end up making it on the show. The other side of that is that it takes a very keen eye to spot a really great idea. And Forbes is someone who has that sensibility. She's always been one step ahead of the industry, and Forbes Living is a chance for her to give those 49,000 plus ideas a home. I think one of the most unique things about a show like Forbes Living is it's truly a Rocky story. It's an underdog story, and she's not afraid to show the smallest guy on the block who has a great idea or someone that's even more, more established. And I think that's very important out there, especially because so many people try to succeed. And, you know, we are America. That's what they strive for. Go out there and do something and create something innovative. And just lets a lot of those underdogs that usually wouldn't have a shot, a real shot at being successful. See, this all started with my dad. My father was an inventor, and uh, I remember I was eight years old, and I was in the garage, and I, he said to me, kiddo, how do I get my inventions out to the world? And I said, Dad, I have no idea. I'm eight years old. And the last 46 years, that's kind of what I've been focused on. See, I saw firsthand how most ideas, they don't start in the corporate boardroom. They start at the dinner table. They start in the napkin. And these are the kinds of companies that have changed forever the way we live. We're on the search for the very best, the most creative minds. And what we're going to do is we're going to give them a platform that they wouldn't normally have. It all happens right here on Forbes Living. So let me ask you a question. If I made that available, that's, that's a television studio that is in Florida. And I host 10 people on a regular basis to have those kind of video assets to look like you're on a national talk show. Can you imagine how would your product look if it was on Good Morning America? Wow. Would people take you more seriously? Oh, yeah. like, that's what we have available. We'll talk about that in a little bit. And Brandon's going to talk a little bit about that opportunity. Is that interesting to you guys? Yeah. 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 Well, it's interesting to me too to have you. Because what it has done so many times for so many is to let the world know how successful you are. And you would rather buy a product on Amazon that has really great reviews, right? Mm -hmm. Than one that has two, if it has 1,500 reviews and they're all five star, than one that has two. I'm gonna tell you, it's, I don't consider it fake until you make it. Here's what I consider it. I consider it build the illusion to achieve the dream. Let me say that again. Build the illusion to achieve the dream. So if you're on stage or you're on a talk show with Forbes Riley, and you sound amazing. Now, in that book, we're gonna play with this tomorrow. Please bring your book back tomorrow. There is a template in there. It starts out with, hi, my name is, I'm known as because. We're gonna practice that. Would that be okay to practice tomorrow when I'm back here? Yes. yes. 
Because I don't want to know that you're a digital marketer or you a real estate agent. If I change the a to a the, I go from I'm a real estate agent to I'm the real estate agent. All of a sudden you got famous. One word changed that. I'm going to give you permission to understand how words will affect the person listening to you. Then if you tweak that even further and say I'm known as the real estate buyer's best friend, because, and that's part of that script, that is what our boot camp is about, that is what this training is about, and tomorrow I would like to teach that. Who's coming back tomorrow? Yay. I'm sorry, is that everybody? <laughs> I will also put on the board, I'll make sure that the QR code, QR code was not working. Fear not, I have a URL for you. Yes, my girl? She I'm got right, in. Number four. Number four, there I you got go. In. I got in. Well, tomorrow, and I apologize for not feeling very well. Tomorrow, I'm going to work with you guys and girls individually and in a, collectively in a group to get you to understand how to pitch better. Would that be okay? Yes. yes. I promise that I will be fine. I will spend the rest of the afternoon chilling. And things happen. Now, ironic, I said we started today. You know what I like about when things go wrong? You're all very present right now, aren't you? That's the best thing you can hope for when you're a speaker. Mm -hmm. So people are paying attention and they're listening. And I connected with you. So I'm gonna end my presentation how I started it with my dad. And I'm gonna make this matter to you guys because I wanna leave you with a sense. And there's a little audio at the end of this, John, if you would help me out. <clears throat> and it may or may not play, I don't really care. I'm gonna tell you, that was the first picture I remember of my dad. That is the last picture I have of my dad. We talk about live the dash. This is that dash for you. This is the only Thursday in 2024 in February. That's the 22nd that you're here, okay? As soon as we leave, it'll be gone. So everybody come collectively into the room for a second, and I want you all to join me. I want you to think about one dream that you've got. A dream that will allow you to express who you are, to make you money, to make a difference. Please take that moment and put that thought in your head. I'm a manifesting maven. I can make this come true. I'm going to imagine, because I'm going to meet you guys all next year, and you're going to tell me, Forbes, I created this, I manifested it, and you were the catalyst. That makes his life make sense, it makes her life make sense, and it really matters to me. Okay? I would like all of you to stand up. When my dad got sick, I didn't know that dads could die. Anybody here ever lost somebody they care about? Yeah. Yeah. Their dreams are done. They have no more dreams. You are here. If you choose to make that manifest, it will matter. If you don't, you will die and nobody will care either. So take your hand and find that dream. Put it in your hand, whatever it is, and bring it down to you. That dream, if I could make it happen right now, Put it on your heart for a second as I finish with the story of my father. He had cancer, he had lung cancer. We're walking around the hall with his IV and there's a whole bunch of cords in the hallway. And he said to me, kiddo, I watched you your whole life. I watched you jump. You jumped into miracles. You've been in movies and television. You've done so many things because you jumped. Even when people told you you couldn't do it, you jumped anyway. I never did that. I played a very small life, and I regret that. He said, I wish for you that you die with no regrets, so I'm going to jump. I'm like, Dad, what are you doing? He put his IV on the other side of the cords on the floor, and he says, I'm jumping! <laughs> and he did, and he boom, fell on the floor. And the nurses come running over, and he looks up at me, partly laughing, partly I'm in shock, not sure what's going on, and he said, kiddo, it's too late for me. My wish for you is to get other people to jump. The next day he was gone. So I've been left with that vision of how do I get people to jump? Here's what I do. I simply tell you to scream the word so loud that your ancestors hear it, that my dad hears it, that your angels hear it, and that this thing in your hand becomes a reality so that you die with no regrets, at least not this one, because you did what you set out to do. Is that fair? Yeah.
Now, I think you can probably scream a little louder than you realize, but I'd like the entire part of the airport to shake. <laughs> so I'm going to say three, two, one, and we're going to scream and jump. Would that be okay? Yes. Yeah. Think about your dream. Hold it against your heart. Imagine it's true, it's here, it's happened. Say to yourself before I let you go, I have been a speaker on the biggest stages. I have made a million dollars in a year. I found the true love of my life. I witnessed my grandkids being born. Just one, that if it happens, you won't die with it as a regret. Three, two, one.